Welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel, brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, we get to have a little bit of fun with the brand new Red Heart Pompadoodle yarn, and we are going to learn how to make this luxurious bath rug. How cool is this? I'm telling you, this is super squishy. We will learn how to do a knit stitch and a purl stitch using this really fantastic pompadoodle yarn. The yarn does all the work for you. We're just gonna do some simple stitches. Once you're all done, you will bind off and you will have a completed project. Go ahead and download this free pattern from redheart.com. I've put a link in the video description box right down there below. And while you're down there, go ahead and smash that like button as my kids say to let people know you enjoyed this video. Once you've got the pattern, grab your needles and your pompadoodle yarn, and I will show you how to cast on, how to knit, how to purl, and how to change colors with this really great yarn so that you can get a really awesome rug. All right, let's not delay. Let's work with pompadoodle today. I gotta tell you, I love this little rug. And when my kids saw it, they were like, mom, I've gotta have that rug for my bathroom. I think it's fantastic. And what's really great is the Pompadoodle yarn comes in 19 fantastic colors. So you can mix and match just about anything to fit whatever bathroom decor or kitchen decor or studio decor you're going for. So hopefully you've got some great colors that you're working with today. All right, let's go. As you're looking at the pompadoodle yarn, you can see that the nature of the yarn is that it has puffs of pompadoodles, so little puffs of pom-poms that are separated by four inch length of yarn, okay, so this string. We will be knitting with the actual string, ignoring the pom-poms. The pom-poms themselves are just gonna hang out there and look pretty as we're knitting and purling away. To cast on with the pompadoodle yarn, you have to do a knitted cast on. When we do a knitted cast on, the whole point is to knit between these two pom-poms to get stitches on our left hand needle. So what we wanna start off with is a slip knot and we wanna put our slip knot as close to this first pom-pom right here as possible. So what I like to do is I will take my forefinger and take my working yarn, so this is the strand, wrap it around my forefinger and when I come back up, I'm actually gonna use a crochet hook for this because it makes it easier. When I come back up, see how my strand I was wrapping around is now behind the one that it started? So I will just go underneath the one that started and grab the one behind, okay? And what I've done there is I've created a slip knot. And now I can place this slip knot directly onto my needle and see how close it is to my actual first stitch there. It just makes it look nice, okay? The size needles you will use for this project is depending on your gauge, obviously. You wanna make sure you're using a needle size that will get you two stitches between each strand of pom-pom without a whole bunch of slack. A little bit of slack is okay, but not a lot. So you will go ahead, place that slip stitch onto your needle. Now you'll take your separate needle and we are actually going to work the knitted cast on. So you will go into that slip stitch, take our yarn here and working with the strand, okay, let's see here, with the strand between the pom-pom we just did our slip knot and the next one, we are going to wrap this strand around the needle that we just inserted into our slip stitch. Once we wrap that strand around, we will now pull that strand through, pull it up, okay? And this is really important. You're gonna take your left hand needle, swivel and scoop at that strand and place it on your left hand needle. Can you see that? And then we'll repeat. But when we repeat, we're gonna ignore this puff working only with this strand between the next puff and this one, and we will do our knitted cast on. So I will go into that stitch, come over here to this strand, yarn over, come out just like I'm knitting, pull up, swivel, and scoop. Go into that new stitch, working with the strand still, right? I have to get two stitches between each puff, work it around, come out, swivel and scoop. You see that? You see how I got two stitches between that puff and that puff? Now I would carry on. I would ignore this puff and I want to get two more stitches here. Let's do this again. 
go into this stitch, wrap, come out the stitch, swivel and scoop. Go into the stitch, wrap the stitch, or wrap the needle, come out the stitch, swivel and scoop. And you can see here, I just got two more stitches between those two puffs. For this project, you would carry on until you get a total of 20 stitches on your needle. I'm only going to work with eight stitches just to show you how this works. The pattern wants us to do a knit one, purl one, and repeat all the way down this row. So we will knit and purl just like we know how to, but again, we will ignore these puffs. And we want to make sure we get two stitches between each puff. So just like before, I will go ahead, go into that stitch, I will go ahead and knit, but this time I'm not putting that stitch on my left hand needle, right? Because now it's an actual stitch. And then on this one, I want to purl. So I will take my yarn, come between my needles, go in as if to purl, and purl. Again, ignoring that puff, just working with the strands between the puff. Now I need to knit, so I bring my yarn between my needles, Go ahead, go into the next stitch, ignore this puff, and knit. And it is okay if you have a little bit more slack than what you normally would have between the stitches. Um, totally normal, it will begin to work its way into um, itself as you're working through this pattern. The pom-poms really kind of eat up any extra slack or extra stitch that might be there. Again, I'm just working my knit one, purl one, making sure I'm getting two stitches between each of the palms. So I'll get one knit, come to the front, and then I'll get one purl. When you get to the end, just like normal, you would switch your needles so you put the needle that was in your right hand into your left. You can maneuver the stitches a little bit so that way you can see the actual string on your needle as it's hanging out there. And you'll notice that it really pairs itself up. As you get two stitches between each puff, you begin to see that those two stitches sort of pair up to each other, which makes it really great because if you're ever fearful that you've dropped a stitch, you can easily count by twos to make sure you still have 20 stitches on your needle. You would go ahead and work back one more row alternating knit one, purl one, all the way down the row. At the end of row two, you would then switch your colors to a different color of pom-pom and then work two rows with the next color. You will not cut the old color of pom-pom. You will carry it up. Let me get down this row and I'll show you what I mean. All right, I'm doing my last purl stitch here. And somebody asked me, why is it that we are alternating knits and purls when the yarn really hides a lot of that? And the reason is because we wanna make sure that we have puffs on both sides of our mat, not just on one side. So by alternating the knit stitch and the purl stitch every, um, you know, every stitch, we are making sure that we have those puffs on either side of the mat. All right, so I've reached the end of my work and I've turned. I can see I have all of my stitches up there. Everything's paired up nice and neat. And it looks really great so far, right? In the black, white, and gray puffs. And I looks, it looks as if they are even on both sides. That's what I mentioned about the nature of doing the knit one and the purl one. Now what I wanna do is instead of using this colorway on the next two rows, I wanna use a different colorway. So let's go ahead and grab this really pretty blue one here. And all I'm going to do is instead of knitting with the other one, I will go ahead and jump in and just start knitting with this one, okay? So I am literally just going to stick my needle in, go ahead and yarn over with the new strand. And when I come up and off, all I will do is just make sure that just stays there, right? And I go ahead, carry on, let me get my strands organized here a little bit. And I have to make sure I purl the next stitch. And I'm still on this first strand here, so I will go in, purl, and then now I move the yarn back to the back, and I'm ready to knit. See how this works? So I've knit one, now I bring the yarn to the front, and I will purl one. And by doing this for two rows, by the time I get done with my second row, I will be down at the other end where I joined this color, 
and my other color will be down there waiting for me. So it'll be waiting for me to just pick it up and start working two rows with the other color. Again, you do not wanna cut your strand. You can just carry it up along the side. It will be perfectly fine, I promise. So here we go. I'm almost to my last pearl right here. Sweet, and I'm at the end, so everything looks fantastic. You can see I have the new puffs are all starting to show up. Pretty darn cool, right? And I turn my work. So let's go ahead and I would work my way back. So I would make sure every stitch, like I get two stitches between each puff, okay? I wanna make sure I get two stitches between each puff. Oh, I just knit that one, didn't I? Let's make sure I purl. Come up here and purl. Start to talk and I lose track a little bit. I carry on just knitting and purling down the entire row. And when I get to the end, my other color will be down there waiting for me. So let's get down there so you can see what I mean about just floating the yarn up along the side so that way you can simply work with the new color, okay? So let me come up here and do my purl. And then go to the back and do my knit. And come up here and do my last purl. So I'm down here and I'm gonna do my purl stitch. I turn my work and as I go to go into these next stitches, I wanna make sure I'm not using the blue. I would go ahead, drop the blue, pick up the gray here, and I would simply continue on in my pattern. And this time I will just work my stitches using my gray, black, and white colorway. You see how that works? And what's great is the pom-poms really hide any sort of float that happens as it comes up, right? It hides it right here along the side. You can't even tell. Now this project does use stripes and it uses two balls of yarn for each color. So you will at one point in time need to change colors again and add a whole new ball of yarn. I would suggest that when you do that, go ahead and try and do it at the end of the row. Don't do it in the middle of your work. Um, and then when it comes to fastening off any sort of ends or weaving in your ends, it can be a little bit tricky, but with this particular yarn, it is really feasible and okay to actually tie a knot into the string or even use fabric glue to tack down your ends. Okay. Now you know how to make this really luxurious bath rug. Let the yarn do all the work for you. You just do some simple knits and purls, and then you simply bind off, tack down your ends, and it is all done. This yarn is a lot of fun. It's Red Hearts Pompadoodle yarn. Get it at a store close to you. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. Thank you. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.